Hello again everyone. Now, if you're someone particularly affluent and you've had your eye on this, Nikon's latest ultra-wide-angle bright aperture zoom lens, 14 to 24mm f2.8 Z, then you'll have already noted that it's a lens with a lot of possibilities for people who like to use filters, making it extra useful as a landscape lens, which is one of the many reasons I was happy to give it a pretty favourable review last week, despite its price. One particular filter company, Hyder, seemed to have gotten particularly excited about this and have produced no less than three different filter solutions for the lens. They sent me some sample filters just in time to test with the lens when I was borrowing it from Nikon, and I was able to take a look for you all. Here we go with option number one, 112mm filters. Hyda make a number of these various kinds, and the good news is that they're thin enough for you to use one of them on the lens without any vignetting at all, even at 14mm, and so getting one of their 112mm polarising filters would probably be your first stop for landscape pictures. As you can see in these images, simply using a polarising filter makes a big difference to your blue skies, although you do have to be a little careful shooting at the lens's widest angles, because you may get uneven results. Here's another example. You can see how the colours and tone of this entire picture are greatly improved by the filter. When I tested this polarising filter, it was excellent. It didn't interfere with sharpness at all, or introduce extra flaring. It gave my pictures a slightly warm colour cast, but that's normal for a polarising filter. What if you add another 112mm filter on top of that? You get nice results again, but at 14mm, a little vignetting is now lurking in the corners. Zoom in to 16mm and it goes away. Something I'd love to see one day from Hyda, or another manufacturer, is a 112mm polarising plus ND filter in one. That would be a useful option with this particular lens. So, that's your first option, using 112mm front filters with the lens. From Hyda, they cost between 125 to 182 US dollars, so they're not cheap, but that's broadly in line with other manufacturers' offerings. Hyda offer quite a full range of them too. Well, let's move on to choice number two, rear filters. The Nikon lens already accepts rear gelatin filters as it is, but Hyder's solution here means that you can use higher quality glass ND filters, which come in a little box here in a variety of strengths. In order to get this working, you have to unscrew the lens's plastic rear filter holder and remove it, and the filter set comes with a screwdriver of just the right size for doing that. It goes without saying that you must do this with enormous care. You only need to unscrew the three vertical screws that are away from the lens's electronic contacts. Then, you screw in Hyder's own filter mount, which is made of metal and actually feels higher quality than the one that comes with the lens. Then, you can lock a rear filter into the back, like so. It's a clever solution, if a little nerve-wracking, as you're fiddling about with those tiny screws. So, here's a picture taken without any filters, alongside a picture with one of Hyder's 10-stop, or ND 3.0, rear glass filters. The image remained as sharp as ever, and the filter produced an effect of 10 stops of darkness. It has a very slightly red colour cast to it, but nothing to really worry about too much. And now, here's a picture with the rear ND filter, with a polarizer at the front as well. That looks very nice actually, and the colours seem to have balanced out quite well. So, that's your second solution, and although it's a little fiddly, it works pretty well, with no real effect on image quality, and it allows you to use a polarizer on the front of the lens at the same time, with no issues. Very nice. The complete rear ND filter kit costs 150 US dollars, or about 133 euro, and that comes with four different strength uh, ND filters. And Hyder's final filter solution is pretty interesting actually. This adapter they make will allow you to mount your Hyder M10 front filter holder onto the lens, which is particularly impressive as that's just a medium sized filter holder. It's great that you won't need to use those giant 150mm filters. Just screw the adapter straight onto the front, like so, and your M10 filter holder fits straight on top. There is some bad news, you won't be able to use Hyder's drop-in filters with this solution, including their polarising filter, but you can buy square polarising filters to make up for that. 
you'll only be able to mount 100mm square filters here, but even with a couple of them on there, you won't really see any vignetting, even at 14mm, so that's great. This is a particularly useful solution if, like me, you enjoy using graduated ND filters. The specific adapter ring to hold your M10 filter holder costs 56 US dollars or 50 euro. So if you already own an M10 filter system, then that's a great possibility. To me, it's great and just plain interesting to see filter companies working hard to come up with so many solutions for lens users, particularly with extreme wide angle lenses. It really is incredibly useful for landscape photographers. Personally, I found the simplest solution to be the 112mm front filters or the M10 filter adapter. I like keeping filters on the front of the lens where I can play around with them myself. Anyway, it's nice to see lots of great filter solutions for this particularly expensive and quite beautiful Nikon lens.